What is good? So today is a travel day and I figured a relevant topic on a travel day would be how to travel and make money. How do I do it? How can you do it? What's the step-by-step -step process to getting there? Because believe it or not, there is a formula to make it happen. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada right now, but we have a drive to somewhere way better and way more interesting. All right, so it's been two days, it is bright and early. I gotta pack up this hotel room and head back to Atlanta already. But it leads us to the first thing I wanna talk about today, which is traveling is not a job in itself. I wish it was. I wish you could go to a new place and just have money rain out of the sky on you and be like, wow, I'm experiencing all this new stuff and getting paid. It's better to look at traveling as a byproduct of a job that you choose. So take me for example, photographer and YouTuber. Me doing this trip works in unison with those two jobs, so I get the new experience and I get to make money and make cool content for y'all. Check out this beast of a rental car. I feel like they tricked me. They told me for 10 more dollars a day I could have got a Jeep Gladiator. I kind of wish I had, but I'm sticking to the budget on this trip. So let's say maybe you're a writer or something like that and you like writing blog posts online. One way you could incorporate travel into your blogging and writing interests slash job is to do travel blogs or go travel somewhere and try a bunch of restaurants and write a bunch of reviews, right? Travel guides, whatever it is, get creative. But you got to remember also the trade-off here is when you travel and have a job that you're doing for that travel, you're working. 445 a gallon, love that. And by no means am I saying work is a bad thing. I'm just saying it's not like I'm sitting by the pool drinking margaritas the entire time I'm out here. Usually on these photography trips, I'm kind of like bumming it the whole time. Like I feel like I haven't eaten a real meal in four days. I feel like I haven't slept very well, but it's part of the fun, I guess. Now the biggest lie you hear when it comes to videos like this is this notion that you can just start doing it. Maybe if you have a really good plan, you can, but in reality, it takes time to build up that main branch of your travel business, just like anything else. You gotta start small. So what I recommend to people is, if you wanna do a travel blog, maybe start with a blog in your town and then grow to towns closer to your town and then small flights and then big flights and then international. It just all builds on itself. So the hotel that we stayed at on this trip is called the Ranch at Death Valley, and it is fantastic. Highly recommend this if you're gonna come to Death Valley National Park. Down the street, there's this hotel called the Inn at Death Valley, which is a little bit more fancy, feels a little more upscale, but it's an extra $250 a night, and your boy was not about to pay that. Really loved the service here, it was great. But when it comes to a trip like this, hotels, flights, food, all the expenses that come with them is the reason why I say most people can't just start a travel-based business overnight unless you have this influx of cash, maybe from your family or something like that, which there's nothing wrong with that if you're one of those people. But for people like you and me, you kind of got to start small, build the cash in like a normal business, and then reinvest it and grow. That point is one of the main reasons why when I first started this YouTube channel and a lot of my older videos, they're all based out of Atlanta. I didn't really try to travel. I grew that business business organically, locally, and then expanded outward. And we are out of here. Fantastic trip, like I already said. Look at this place. One more circle around view. But here's the thing. When you have your main branch of your travel tree, as we're calling it, I made that up on the top of my head as I was filming this video, so I'm just gonna stick with it even though it sounds ridiculous. But when you have the main branch of the travel tree, you can build offshoot branches, all right? Like little supplementary branches that are gonna help you be able to take trips like this and offset some of the cost. Time to get back to work so you know the vibe. It's too bad I can't actually play this because I'll get a copyright claim. But quick house update, super fast. Added in this right here, I'm feeling it. But I need you guys to let me know because you have like an outsider perspective, you're not here every day. 
is there something missing on this half of the house? Ignore the shelves. I got to figure out what the hell I'm doing with the shelves. I, I, I don't know what to put on them at this point. Like, I can't just add more pictures. I'll figure it out. But I'm thinking, look at this color curtain right here. It's like a woodish, pinkish, kind of like the color of this hoodie a little bit. I'm thinking I'm going to do that for the curtains. I feel like that would really, like, help out this space. But just let me know. I, I know a lot of you don't care. Just, just bear with me. All right, y'all, so where are we at in this whole travel making money formula? So far, we have talked about building a base. So figuring out the business that you want, whatever it is, and starting locally so you can get some cash and expanding outward to the point where you can travel. Now, here's an interesting phenomenon that happens. The more you grow, especially in today's social media era, the more people who find out about you through the internet, through your marketing, through your branding, whatever you want to call it, the more opportunities you actually have to make money, which is what I was alluding to as we were leaving California. You can build these offshoot branches of revenue. So you often hear people talk about wealth is easier to come by if you have multiple streams of revenue. And that same concept, of course, applies to building a business that revolves around getting to travel. So a really good example of this is in the travel space, you often see influencers and bloggers sell preset packs. Now y'all know me, I'm not huge on presets, but I'm considering doing it because it just makes too much sense. You know, in the context of the travel videos I'm about to put out on this channel from that last trip, if I had a preset pack, I could just say, hey, link down below is my preset if you wanna edit your photos like me. And when I post the photos to Instagram, I could say the exact same thing. This is just another way to make money off the trip I was already taking that was making me money. You get what I'm saying? And you can take these concepts and apply them to whatever ideas you have however you want. Let's say you do that food blogging idea, you create travel guides. Maybe you're actually pretty nice in the kitchen. You could create an ebook of recipes inspired by the places that you're going to, offered at the end of your guide or whatever, and say, hey, if you can't travel somewhere and you want the taste of this country at home, boom, download my ebook, it's $9.99, and you're gonna make more money off the trip you were already making money on. Hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. Now, if you clicked on this video, I hope it gave you the answers you're looking for. I know a lot of people don't like these long road answers where you gotta start small and build something. Everyone wants instant gratification, but I'm telling you, part of the fun is the journey, and four or five years ago, I had none of this stuff. I didn't have a YouTube channel that was making me money. I didn't have sponsors. I didn't have trips to go on. I didn't have potentially preset packs. I didn't have a merch brand. I didn't have anything. And I just built it over time and you can too. So I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. I'll answer comments for the first two hours.